We are drilling. Welcome to the drill. Steve Lowry, Tom Hofarth, Eric Ho uh, <laughs> Eric A. Bear, and Thank John you. McKelvey. You figure out how to spell it. Ooh, there we go. And we'll pronounce it. That's right. Uh, welcome. Uh, we'll be talking about a lot of things, but of course, number one thing, the draft, because it's, it's almost the draft, and the draft is bigger than the Super Bowl. I'm it's feeling a draft. Oh, baby. It's just the biggest deal. And when it comes to the draft, I want to tell you something about our friend John McKelvey. John McKelvey, um, we've learned a couple things about him, Tommy. Number one, apparently he was born six feet tall at birth. It's Basically, yes. There you go. But number two, John reminds me of my brother-in-law, who's a retired sheriff's deputy. In this way, with my brother-in-law, you could never tell him anything that uh, impressed him. You could say, Norm, the car roll, and then the flames, and then the chickens, and, and he'd just go like, yeah, I shot a man. So <laughs> what are you talking about? And that's <laughs> McKelvey. <laughs> <laughs> Anything we say, he'll say, I experienced much worse, and yeah. it was in Youngstown, Ohio. So just slow down, okay? Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a place. <laughs> it is a, it is He's a got more street cred than we could ever want. Totally. But this is what's amazing. When we were talking about the draft yesterday, he got excited. I think it may be the first time I saw John excited. And so, John, I want to ask you, you mentioned you and your friends are fired up about the draft the draft happens every year why Absolutely. are you fired up? why is it it is uh three days or what is it now four days eric three, three days still three, still, three. Still, still three days of uh hope <laughs> <laughs> everyone has hope oh. everyone has hope okay now oh, yeah. up to it you are a i'm a 49er fan and then a i root for the browns right, uh, right. if Okay, hold on a if second. If a bunch of weird circumstances Explain didn't happen, I probably wouldn't uh, be a Niner fan. Yeah. Uh, my parents lived in San Francisco through the 80s. Okay. Uh, oh, that's perfect. I've known Eddie DeBartolo and the DeBartolo family Who for a from long Ohio? time. They're from Youngstown, Ohio. Um, and then when the Browns disappeared, uh, the Niners had just won a Super Bowl two years earlier. Right. And uh, my parents were also so, so excited about that. And they got me real excited about it. And I was uh, I was a Niner fan. Now, explain to me this. You said you're a fan of the Niners, but you root for the Browns, which is what what is what I I don't have the wherewithal to be a full Browns fan. <laughs> explain. Basically, um, it's a tough life since ninety nine. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah. What is it, 29 quarterbacks or whatever right, it is? Yeah. Uh, basically, I just got too involved with the Niners, and uh, when the Browns come came back, I hated the Steelers. Right. So it was naturally, you know, I like the other Cleveland teams. I'm an Indians fan. I'm a Cavs fan. Right. It only makes sense, you know, to kind of just root for them. This is like being in a relationship with a high-maintenance partner. Like, you might love them. You might think they're great. But in the end, you're like, it's too much, yeah, it's too right? Much. I'm just not getting enough back, and it seems like I keep giving and giving. Uh, yeah. Well, what's the good part about it? You said <laughs> high maintenance. <laughs> Browns fan, that's tough. Yeah, it's uh, – I, think I want them to I, – I always want them to do good is sure. what it is. I, I, if it was a Browns-Niners Super Bowl, that's oh. going to be real tough, and I would have to go for the Niners. But – I would be. I wouldn't be mad to lose to the Browns. Let's put it that way. And th I think that's one of the fascinating things about this draft is that the Browns have the one, and four. the four. Now, virtually any other team in a draft that apparently high up has a lot of good talent, not just quarterbacks, defensive players, a running back in Saquon Barkley who's supposed to be a can't the miss. The man, yeah. Almost any other team with a one and a four, you say, well, they can't screw this up. Oh, that's all they're <laughs> talking about. But the Cleveland Browns are like the Lindsey Lohan or. Um, uh, or Let's bring it back into like the next in like the last five years. <laughs> who, who's who could, the, who's, who's the, the most example? Who's of the poster someone? person for screwing up right yeah, now? The Cleveland Browns. <laughs> <laughs> they are the Cleveland Browns easy. of the NFL. Don't yeah. overthink they're it. The yeah, idiot in the, they're the idiot in the horror movie. Like, don't go in that door. Oh, you did it. <laughs> Why are you running upstairs? <laughs> and I swear to God, I wouldn't have thought this possible because I thought they can't screw this up. They'll get a quarterback and they'll get Saquon Barley or, or Barkley or the right. quarterback and check. They can do both. Until last week, I heard they were considering well, drafting two quarterbacks. And yeah, today, right, right. now they're saying they're considering taking um, Mayfield. Baker Mayfield. Baker, Baker. Mayfield. I'm like, oh, come I mean, on. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's got to be one of the two L.A. guys. Okay. It, it's got to be – It I really think it's Darnold. Yeah. Um, I don't think uh, – I'm like with Jim Mora where I don't think Rosen kind of fits into yeah. the, the Cleveland mentality. I think he'd go to Cleveland and absolutely 
friggin' hate it. Right. Do you um, guys buy into that? You need a blue collar guy in a blue collar city. Is that something you guys think? Based is? on their track record, yeah. Here's a, okay, a little history lesson. Back in the eighties, early nineties, you got the Lakers and you got the Pistons, right? Yeah. And they're going at it, and they said that's blue collar versus Hollywood chic, right? Who was the Lakers' number one team? Magic Johnson from East Lansing, Michigan. <laughs> yeah, Midwest Who was man. the baddest of the bad boys? Bill Ambeer. Bill Ambeer from, from Palos Verdes, California. <laughs> right. So, no, I don't buy that. I think people can kind of remake themselves. Yeah, I don't buy it either. What Eli Manning from Louisiana. Right. Tom Brady. It's like a Hollywood guy kind of yeah. in Boston. Yeah, Tom Brady's from the Bay Area. Tom Brady's yeah. from yeah. a really nice area. Preppy. So, yeah. We're a preppy guy. I just... <laughs> I just I don't want them to screw it up, but they're gonna screw it up. Right? I'm I have I have I have low low confidence in them. Yeah. But the moves they've made since the end of the season have actually kind of shifted that. Like now this is a D Podesta team, right? Oh, is that right? Right. That's he, right. Yeah. Well, it was D Podesta. It's okay. no longer. D okay. Podesta. Oh, that's right. The new guy came in. John Dorsey, yeah. who what was is, is Depot's not there anymore at all. Uh, D Podesta's kind demoted? of there he okay. got like super super demoted okay um <laughs> like they're basically trying to get him to quit so they're not okay calling any shots oh. yeah which is what the dodgers ended up doing too I just realized he, yeah exactly that he's not out. billy he's not billy bean Wh what do you think is is more insulting to d podesta that they keep trying to get him to um quit or that he was played by Jonah Hill. And, uh, <laughs> what, what's, what, what would be worse? Money, uh, yeah. Hey, yeah. If, if you go by Jonah Hill's performances <laughs> right. in other movies, it's True. not that bad. I mean, I Wolf mean, of Wall mean, Street, yeah. Yeah. Super Bad. Yeah. Super Bad I mean, was super good. And he's awesome in Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, yeah. 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 Awesome. So what? Well, I married my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. So welcome wanted, to Drill again, yeah. by the way. Welcome to Drill again. It's, it's a two man team again. Show LA about Cleveland Browns. There yeah, we go. Right, right. Oh, yeah, and that's by the way, Beto. Beto is working this week. He's, he's working the He's draft. got a lot of tough yeah. uh, uh, things going on this week with the Chargers. He's on the Charger broadcast. In fact. So we'll catch up with him next week. Let's get started with the drill because the number one thing with the drill is about the Chargers. So count me down. Okay. Let's do the Give drill. Give me a minute. Speaking of the Chargers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> count me down. Oh, yeah. I got you. In. <laughs> In three, two, This is like the one. NHL minute. Okay, so we got the draft coming, and I, I wasn't thinking it was going to be very interesting because, number one, the Rams don't have a pick to, I think, 87th, uh, although I think they've done a great job getting rid of their picks for people like Brandon Cooks, and, and I think they've done a wonderful job in the offseason. The Chargers, a lot of people are saying going to take some tackle from Notre Dame. That doesn't really get me excited. But more recently, they're talking that they might be looking at Lamar Jackson at 17. This, to me, is highly exciting to have the team with the least mobile quarterback, Phillip Rivers, all of a sudden get the most mobile quarterback since Michael Vick. Exciting. I understand that if you take the tackle from Notre Dame, maybe that's a, a really good football move. But let's face it, the Chargers are, They're lo LA. are losing desperately yeah, yep. in the fight for L.A. The yep. Rams are, are just about to put a stranglehold on the city. You get Lamar Jackson, all of a sudden I'm like, huh, Five, what? Four, I might be really three, interested in that. Two, one. Tommy, what do you think, Lamar Jackson? Lamar Jackson is from Louisville. Yes. The greatest Charger quarterback of all time, Johnny Unitas, was from Louisville. Oh, oh that's sorry. Right. He, 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 he ended his career. What about yeah. Drew Brees? That's right. Well, yeah. Listen, hey, I can hey I can now. name I can name f this is my problem with the with the Chargers. I can name four Chargers, and I think one of them is still Stan Humphreys. <laughs> so I don't know what Charger. You, what you have to do with the Chargers to gain some sort of foothold, but Lamar Jackson is a perfect thing to do with seventeen, because it's not going to change your team. It's you're building for the future. You're right. showing some promise. You're showing some smarts in what you want to do. And here's the thing: talk about history. The Chargers, if you don't know this, in the old AFL in the '60s were one of the most innovative, oh, yeah. explosive offenses oh, ever. Yeah. In fact, what they did back then is still stuff that they're, they're doing today. You take a kid like Lamar Jackson and eventually in a couple of years build an offense around him using his dynamism for yeah. that, yeah. it could be terrific. And, by the way, Phillip Rivers still has about a, a year or two. Oh, we'll, we'll give him his time. So yeah. Jackson gets to the, – the, the, the criticism has been he's going to be like an RG3, get hurt because he's small. No. You give him a couple of years to mature, add a little meat to his yeah. bones – and learn the game from one of the best quarterbacks last year. Go with Todd Gurley down to Carl's Jr., load up on some carbs. Exactly. It'll be fine. Yes. Yeah. I I am excited about this. I, I think I, it, why not? I think it could be great. And and to be honest, even as a rookie, 
you could use him in certain packages. Oh yeah. That take yeah. you know advantage of his, yeah. uh, his athleticism. Yeah. I'm have excited. Have you him return so? punts. Return yeah. punts, right? <laughs> Aren't the Chargers? Uh, they pass on the original Michael Vick. Is that right? Didn't they? Well, you know, right? As we just found out, um, Eric has an incredible facility for knowing Schmied's where everyone. Schmeeds is the went. idiot savant of drafts, right? Yes. And did they pass on? I wouldn't even call him an idiot savant. Wasn't it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> it no was Ladainian yeah. Tomlinson and Drew Brees instead of Michael Vick that year. Oh, I don't know. I think that's a pretty good. What do you think? It worked out. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. that's yeah. all right. Well, the the Ladainian Tomlinson. As long as they don't draft Ryan Leaf again, I think they'll be fine. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. All right. How about uh, how about drill number two? Count me down. In three. We good? And Did three, this catch you off guard? Two, <laughs> one. We were talking yesterday about the Dodgers being too dependent on Clayton Kershaw, right? And lo and behold, yesterday, Tommy, I'm looking at my uh, phone and reading some stories. As we Bust, all do. As we all do. And Buster Olney of ESPN is saying if the Giants start to tank this year, they should really think about trading Madison Bumgarner. This is exactly the guy that the Dodgers should go after. They were talking about. Except they're not built to tank right now. I'm sorry, I didn't want. Yeah, to no, no, you. go ahead. No, no, you're right. They're, but the reason why they could tank is because of their age. And I guess I yeah. shouldn't use the word tank. They're not going to no, lose no. on purpose. But the fact is, they they're a really they're old, an old team. team right. Andrew McCutcheon, Evan Longoria, they could start losing <laughs> with great volume pretty soon. Yep. If they do, they might think about using Bumgarner as a way to start restocking the shelves. Only said that the Dodgers might be able to get him for like a Corey Seager, which I would do in a second. But he said, but, you know, they won't trade. But the fact is the Giants and Dodgers Five, have traded four, several three, times, right? Two, oh, yeah. Do you give one. up Seager for Bumgarner, the well, best playoff pitcher ever? This is I, – I, I, I always flash back to this point in 2009 when the Dodgers, I thought, were on the cusp of greatness and Roy Halladay was available. He just pitched uh, ten great seasons with the Blue Jays. The Dodgers, all they had to do was give up – Kershaw to Toronto for holiday. And I was like, I was so for it. And Kershaw wasn't Kershaw back Kershaw then. was a, a kid that had potential, but he was wild. Right. And I thought, there's never g he's never going to fix this wildness. Right. Let's let him go to Toronto, chill out for a few years. Then he can go to the Rangers where he right. wants to go. We get Holiday, and, you know, and then you rattle off. Because Holiday went to the Phillies eventually, throws a, throws a no-hitter in the playoffs. Yeah. He, has he wins 21, 19 games, and that was it. Right. You, so you were getting Holiday for two years out of a four-year deal. Now, the Dodgers didn't want to pay that price with right. Kershaw. So with Seager, eh. I if they had someone in the pipeline, I'd say sure. Yeah. But I don't know who that who that is. But you can't – you can't – you have to take what's real now. Yes. You can't win on potential. And that's what I'm saying about the thing – now people say, oh, God, you would never trade Kershaw for right. Holiday. Right. But if they had, they may have won a World Series. Right, they may have then. won a World Series. I right think now. you always have to think about yeah, that. Yeah, and and I don't know if the Giants maybe ne they can negotiate. Maybe they don't need a shortstop because uh, Crawford's pretty decent. I don't know if they yeah. they plan on him lasting long. But if the Dodgers got something else to offer, like a Urias, you know, or something mm -hmm. like that, that could give them something. Uh, but here's the thing: I'm not sold on Bumgarner. Yeah. Because of his injury proneness, I mean, I love what he's done. He's got a great track record in the World yeah. Series, which the Dodgers need a playoff. Pitcher. pitcher and he's the best he's the best at in the game it's right the anti-kershaw what's that the anti-kershaw exactly all yeah. playoffs yeah. so you could have the yeah. best regular season pitcher yeah and the best playoff pitcher right yeah. i mean it, it would be a perfect kind of mix i told you and maybe people think i'm i i would trade bellinger for uh for bum Gardner. absolutely definitely not <laughs> definitely uh, not you know what no there's two the, the the ceiling's too high for him right now and Seager right now, his stock is so low. I, I don't feel like you're, you're really doing him justice. Doing enough. Seems yeah. like he's hurt still. Seager, I think yeah. that is. Yeah. That he's is. had a really slow yeah. start. Yeah, he's going to have to really prove himself to but be healthy. But see, my thing, when you say his uh, Bellinger's ceiling is high, okay, but Bumgarner's That's already gonna there. Win. That's not going to win. That's not going to win. High ceilings aren't going to win. He's, this is, I mean, we'll throw out references like Greg Brock and Billy Ashley. These were the guys that were going to come and save the Dodgers in the past. They never did. I've never heard of those guys. I, right, you're right. That's ex my point. <laughs> These were the guys in the 80s who were going to take the Dodgers to the championship. This is why we can get rid of Garvey. This is why we can get rid of this so-and-so, because we got these guys in the pipeline. Right. And they never did it. Are you going to trade your cleanup hitter, though, for a number two or three starter? No, he's a number no. one starter, especially in the playoffs. I mean, that, he's single-handed. On the Dodgers, the though, Series. he's not going to be your number one starter. In the playoffs, he is. Mm, I and don't think Dave Roberts is really going to do We have to debate that. it. But that's... 
that's what killed them this year is they didn't have the – like I said, they, they don't need a, a one and a two. They need a one and a one A. And, and Bumgarner is the one A. They tried that All with right. Granky. All right. Let's, yeah, I, yeah. Well, that's the thing. I think if they would have got Granky combo. last year, they would have they yeah. won the World Series again. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We probably lost half the audience because we're talking baseball. So back to the draft. <laughs> the draft. The draft. <laughs> My favorite. Let's, how about we do the biz? The business. The draft. Is that yeah. it? No, no, no. How, mu- how, how much can we say? How many? Four seconds of the business? Go. Ready? Count us down. How it's much does he want? Business. Oh. No? Does All he right. get four minutes for this? No. I can just <laughs> take a few. Tommy, let's do the biz. So it's the draft is coming. Let's talk about the draft as a television show. Right. Because it's become, I have to say, there are certain shows that I just don't get. Two and a half men. <laughs> <I'm good. laughs> Hasn't been on the air for five years. Charlie right, Harper. Right, right. Uh, right. Big Bang Theory. Big Bang Theory. Yeah. I don't get I've watched it for about three minutes and said, okay, it's a bunch of math You know, jokes. Young Sheldon is much better. Oh. That, well, okay. I'm not going to watch either of those shows, but the best way I've de- heard uh, Big Bang Theory described, it's uh, a comedy about smart people for stupid people. There you go. Mm, that's right. a good way to put yeah. it. Young Sheldon is kind of the same way, but it's a better cast. But uh, but, other, but, uh, but forget it. They'll be watching the draft because they live in uh, Houston, right? right I think yeah. or Grey's Anatomy. Yeah. I don't get I, I can't. I think it's still on the air. I, I don't get it. So the know. draft, what am I doing? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's technical. So anyways, what... Um, the draft has become this incredible television show that I don't understand. And everybody why. wants to televise it. Right. This year we'll have six networks televising it for the first time. Six? Well, you have three ESPNs. Deportes has jumped into it. You got ESPN and ESPN2. Fox is taking the NFL network feed, and ABC is going to jump in on Saturday for programming. They're going to knock out kids' programming to put on the NFL draft, which is a simulcast of ESPN. Like, no one can get ESPN. We're going to put it on ABC. So the, the theory is – They don't have NBA playoffs to be doing or something? <laughs> right. Oh, it's probably like a lead-in. You know what? It's yeah. probably like a, th- a, a, a 9 to noon lead-in into the NBA playoffs. Right. So they pretty much – they don't have college football, so let's right. put this on. Um the thinking is, I was reading a, a story in the Sporting News, is that um, NBC and CBS wants a piece of this now. So Fox got a piece of it this year to get the NFL Network simulcast. It's right. not even their own feed. In the future, ESPN could have lost this all. They have built this basically ba- on the fact that they said they went to uh, the NFL and said, hey, we'll televise. And they go, Psh, go ahead. Right. We haven't had this televised in 26 years. You And you then they've taken it to this level. Now everyone wants a piece of it, wants a piece of NFL branding on their TV, right? right? So the point is the NFL draft could be covered like a presidential election where everybody is covering it. Right. And because it's a news event, right, and you can have your own people, it, it's, it makes sense in some way, but it's so diluted and delusional that it's, so, it's going to work. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. why I don't understand. So here's, this was a great tweet I found this morning. A guy named Michael David Smith said, in 2038, when the NFL draft is on Mars, and Elon Musk announces a 10-year, $10 trillion deal to beam it directly to the chips in our brains, we'll all pine for the day when it was just a small event at a 100,000-seat stadium and only on Fox, ESPN, ESPN2, ABC, and an NFL network. See, that's what I don't understand. I get, um, look, you take the two most popular sports in America, professional football, college football put them together they have yeah, a baby that is the baby is is the draft i yeah, get that yeah. but the fact is the nba draft you're much more likely in the nba draft to see people who will have an immediate effect ben simmons Joel Embiid. they will come right in and have an effect nfl draft you're getting guys who have very specific <laughs> roles an inside linebacker from vanderbilt uh, a left tackle or whatever and yet people approach it like it's this transformative american idol yeah. thing and i mean i like when they give Roger Goodell, the hug and all that kind of stuff. But I don't understand why it is such great television, except for the fact that I think Tampa is going to have a parrot give one of its uh, oh selections. Here's why it's great television. Okay. There's a clock on it. Mm. There is a ticking clock. A ticking clock is always giving you suspense. Mm. It's always giving you drama. There is right. time coming up. There's Beaming. time running out. There's... Uh, Oh my God! There's only a minute left. Who are they going to pick? Oh my! Uh, and then, well, they once that pick is taken, oh, what's the next team going to do? Right. It changes everything. Oh, somebody made a trade. There's drama. It's uh, it's so it's here's what can happen. truly drama with that clock. 
the Browns' first pick runs out, right? Oh my God! Don't <laughs> right. do that. That's, that's isn't that, that isn't that like the perfect right. thing that happen? Well, how many? Uh, don't pull minutes? a Raiders. Don't pull a Raiders. It's don't pull a Raiders. Mi- right, right. And they and they go. Oh, <laughs> it's ten minutes, by the way. Ten. Okay. I I'm telling you, tomorrow they it up, right? we're gonna yell at the TV more than any sporting event this year. Really? Absolutely. Oh yeah, yeah. But it's amazing. Our, but who has made more money out of this whole draft than Mel Kiper Jr.? Yeah, let's tell. Let's talk that. Uh, someone was telling me a very uh, Johnny. Tell us this very funny Mel. So Jim Kiper Thompson story. has done an illustration oh, this yes. week with. Okay. We great. have we have the Jim Thompson. Uh, let me uh, pull this up full screen so you don't have to see everything I got going on. Um, but yeah, we have the Thompson illustration uh, right here. There it is. Um, as you can see, I predict a late career resurgence by Jimmy Clausen. Um, and explain this. Uh, so Jimmy Clausen uh, was one of the most cannot miss guys that Mel Kiper ever said, and they said he said basically Oaks if he doesn't have a good career coming out of Notre Dame, which Mel Kiper, by the way, is absolutely obsessed with Notre Dame quarterbacks, right. always has been. Um, so he said, if he doesn't have a good career, I will quit. And they said, how long is it going to take? Ah, I need like eight years. So that's the so coming up on eight and years. How long's it been and where is Jimmy it is, now? It is now eight years. Jimmy's now coaching high school football in the Valley, <laughs> which sounds like a bad reality show. Right. But that's what happened. Um, going back, I remember, what is it about Notre Dame quarterbacks? You, I don't know if you remember this. There was a guy named Ron Paulus. And oh, yeah. Bino Cook, who was an ESPN analyst, said he'd win at least – to Heisman Trophies, <laughs> like if he only wins one, that'll be a disappointment. Oh, uh, Bino. Yeah, yeah. It was. Um, I must admit, I'll be watching too. But it, it's one of those things. You know what it's like? It's like the Academy Awards. I get all ginned up for it, <laughs> and six <laughs> minutes after, I don't remember who the best. No, you don't need to know is. what you're drinking during no. the show. <laughs> I, a, hey, by the way, when you were phrase. mentioning the, the good thing about having a clock, you were looking right at me. Is oh, yeah. A, yeah <laughs> there's a clock. Because you're like, I don't, yeah. you're the one who's saying, you're saying, I don't get it. I don't know. I don't, I don't, it, it doesn't interest me. <laughs> we it's have a, a clock. Ticking clock. We have so a ticking clock on the show it's now, right and that's there. when we all know, you know, time's up. Real quick, just in the business, uh, a new stadium opens up in L.A., Bank of California. and I'm Bank with a C. Bunk. That's right, yeah. And I'm kind of amazed, like, the stadium they're building for the Rams, because it rained, they had to push it back like two years, which is so embarrassing for us. This stadium, like, it's almost like it went up like Ikea furniture. <laughs> they just like, Ooh, there it is. And it looks like Ikea furniture. It's a <laughs> really cool-looking thing, isn't it? Yeah. Have you seen it? I was going to say, it's it kind of looks like an Ikea furniture yeah. kind of stadium. It it's it not was pieced together. There's yeah. not much to it. Somebody yeah. shipped um, it in a box. They blew up the sports <laughs> arena, and the guys all – right. Those and, of course, whoever did it, they broke up because <laughs> they'd gotten an argument about right, it. Right, right. Yeah. They couldn't read the directions. Yeah. Hey, those directions are so easy. Figure it out, people. They're pictures. They're pictures in Swedish. Has uh, Has anyone here been inside that stadium yet? I saw it. I drove past it where I could see inside. Right. And it comes right to the uh, street. I mean, right. it took up – you know, the sports arena was this. This takes up everything. And it added, like, a VIP lounge, which the Coliseum people can use. Yeah. And, and it – they need a VIP lounge, obviously, just for the ownership to have somewhere to gather before. But this thing looks phenomenal because they also built it like Galen Center when they built that for USC. They built this huge uh, glass partition where you can look out and see downtown L.A. Yeah. This has the same view. Right. It's And, and it, has, it, it looks like an enclosed stadium, but it's not really, so it's an open air. I couldn't believe this was the first open air stadium in L.A. since Dodger Stadium. 1962. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can count StubHub and you can count yeah. Staples, but, but when you want to really LA. count in L.A. proper, where there is a huge soccer fan base. Right. And, I, and and these people, I hope these people can afford to go into this thing one day. Right. It's, it's only 22,000, I think. Oh, is that it's right? Smaller it's than smaller than StubHub. Smaller okay. than StubHub. So, and 17,005 are season seats. So it's really wow. going to be a, a, a premium to get in there. And I hope the people who live there – benefit from it i i i don't know you those know, season tickets will be available on StubHub for <laughs> on about StubHub, a 25 percent markup right yeah. exactly yeah. you know the great thing about galen you're right it has that gorgeous view and the nice thing about going to galen is you know there'll never be anyone standing and getting in your yeah, way yeah. of that view yeah. well they always close the curtain too because the glare of the lights shine on the, the on the window they uh. didn't consider this so you can't see it anyway so right, it's exactly. only for day games and then they open the windows oh and there's too much sun and if tv's <laughs> there at all they close the game yeah. they, they close it entirely yeah, yeah. right exactly. right it's it was a great idea 
Um, okay, we're uh, about got time to wrap up. Five we got, minutes. We've got about five minutes, so I want to talk about something we teased to, TV term, yesterday. And uh, I'm really ready to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, you got to get it off your chest. Ready? Yeah. Raccoons. Raccoons. Do you have you any raccoon music? Yeah, give me, give me some raccoon music. Raccoon music? Maybe uh, or Muskrat, Muskrat Love. Muskrat Love. Yeah, I was yeah, thinking yeah. of that, too. Oh, there, <laughs> there you it go. Is, yeah. That's, good. That's actually what it sounds like. in. Okay, in between the walls of my house, I have raccoons, and they – could you hit that sound again? Okay, but but time's about 10, and so much so that when I first heard I had raccoons, I thought I had ghosts because my house is like 100 years old. The ghost of Dewey Weber. Somebody was there and, and doing this, and now I've been told I have raccoons. So then we went and we got traps for the raccoons at 150 bucks. You didn't get the traps. You called someone I to called bring someone, traps. And they literally walked in, put down a trap, said, give me $150. And put cat food in it. And left. And they did not expect a cat to go in there, right? We've caught three cats and two yeah. squirrels, it no makes, raccoons. It never makes sense. In fact, the raccoons are so brilliant, they push over the trap, and then they go get the cat food. This is, this is how smart they are. They, one night, I heard one out there about 4 o'clock in the morning. And um, I go out, and I turn on the light, and he, he looks up, and he's looking right at me. And so I don't know why. On his hind legs, On probably. his hind legs. Yeah. And he's kind of, he's Ready not to scared. Box. He's not scared. He's yeah. giving me the, you know, what's up. And for some reason, I turned into a, uh, like, southern sheriff, and I said, hey, you get. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. <laughs> you get. Okay? And, of course, he just was like, What? <laughs> So, now, raccoons can be very dangerous, so of course I had a weapon, an uh, underinflated volleyball. I said, all right. Every and home I in Hermosa Beach has, has one, one of these. Throw it at him, hits him in the shoulder, thinking that's going to stun him. Hits him, and he just kind of goes, right, what? And then he just crawled back into my house. Sounds like a Pixar movie. So, please, if you have any suggestions. Now, they're, they're talking about now they might have to cut into my walls and um, uh, pump in dominant raccoon male pheromones that when I told Tommy that, he said, don't you have that in your pants? Thank you. Yeah. But they literally may have to do that. So if anybody has any idea. I would say send a skunk in there to smoke him out. Oh, God. But then you got the skunk. But you know what, skunk, yeah. we, we had skunk issues. Skunks went under our house once, and the whole house just smelled awful. Right. So all they told us was, yeah, they set up the traps. But you know what? You boil vinegar around the house. Okay. So the whole house smelled like burning vinegar. Right. And it was not as pleasant <laughs> as the, the skunk smell was better. Okay. All right. It's, you know, you, you kill it with orange spray. I don't know what you should kill it with. But, yeah, we have the same problems. Raccoons come in our house once. We have skunk. We have uh, we have uh, possums, which See, is a whole other story. Weird. I come from a city called Downey, which is inland, and it has a lot of agriculture. So we had tons of wildlife. Yeah. But when I moved to the South Bay, I just thought all the wildlife would be they in the ocean. They all came down from Palisades. Bill Lambert chased them all down the hill. <laughs> there you go. That's what it amounted to. It's just, it's incredible how much stuff we've got. And yeah. you, you can't, you you can't be, touch them. No, you don't want to touch them. No, no. Because what did, you, what did you tell us the other day, John, about rabies? If you see a raccoon during the day. During the day, if yeah. you see a raccoon dur out during the day, it is uh probable that it has rabies oh no oh. because they're freaked out of my head they're uh typically a uh, nocturnal animal right right um but since you guys were talking about at the beginning of the show how uh no matter what we talk about right i have something that's bigger <laughs> and better <laughs> right, there, there you it go is. here it is so uh <laughs> <laughs> earlier this month he dated a raccoon Youngstown. nope 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 <laughs> yeah. and it is youngstown <laughs> nah, so <laughs> hold on zombie raccoons are terrifying residents in ohio <laughs> I told you. <laughs> this was earlier this month. Uh, this one I got up is from USA Today. ABC7 took the story. The Washington Post. Uh, the New York Times had it at one point. Can we post this somewhere? Uh, it, we'll, we'll put it in the, in the okay. links. But uh, the Youngstown, uh, Ohio. Police are investigating reports of zombie-like raccoons in Northeast oh, Ohio. WKBN-TV, the local uh, CBS yeah. affiliate, was the first to uh, report Eyewitness. on it. They were on it. And I must admit, my raccoons sound happy. In fact, I think they're raising a family. They should be. Which they're very domesticated at this point. Well, it means, Tommy, that in my in between my walls, they're making sweet, sweet raccoon love. And mm. I'm, I don't know if Must I'm okay with that. Bone. And slightly mm. violent. Anyways, look at Tommy. Okay, we're going to get this sucker done. 30 really, minutes. if you have any ideas, send Again, 30 please minutes send or less. Me raccoon if ideas. If this show is 30 minutes or less, you get it free. <laughs> and then also, uh, a local T-shirt company is now selling zombie raccoon shirts. Okay, I need and they are selling Again, out. A again, a Pixar movie script waiting to be written right there. 
Hey, like us on Facebook. Like us on Twitter, on Where, Instagram. You, got, on you guys have a favorite uh, social media spot really quick? Uh, the one that I've been consistently watching the most uh, every time they post a new video on YouTube, uh, this one guy, uh, I think his name is Andrew Ray, has a show called Binging with Babish. And it basically started as a uh, cooking show uh, where he makes food from right. like famous movies and TV s sh series and stuff like that. Huh. So he's got like a Seinfeld special where he does a bunch of uh, food from Seinfeld. He makes the uh, cream of mushroom soup from the Soup Nazi. Oh, um, wow. Stuff from The Simpsons yeah. and basically like any movie that has like a famous uh, or TV show that has some sort of famous food revolving in it. Right. Uh, he'll recreate it taste it and if it tastes like crap he'll uh <laughs> he'll make a better one that's great well where where did you find the zombie raccoon that that's the site i want to go to uh you that just was Googled just it? facebook i mean yeah. Oh, yeah? Facebook. and then well uh it's the youngstown clothing company i believe yes youngstown clothing company so how makes do you search for that just messed up stuff in youngstown ohio <laughs> and like hey <laughs> if you just you just search <laughs> youngstown ohio on google just youngstown ohio. and it's gonna have some weird shit pop up every we single time got to do this show in youngstown ohio Eventually no you don't we'll oh, you never <laughs> want to no shmeed you got a favorite social media site I got nothing for you guys, but join us tomorrow, Penn Street, NFL Draft. <laughs> oh. Very nice. It is. I got one quick uh, Twitter account that I've been following. It's called Man Cave Pictures, and it's a guy who takes old photos from baseball in the 1900s, black and white, real grainy things, and he not just colorizes them. He makes them look like they're 3D, and you can go out, and this guy looks like he could be – your dad, you know, he looks you like mean he the could. People in the, picture. the people in the picture look yeah. amazingly real, right? And and it's spooky real, and it's. Uh, I've seen like them do this with with pictures of Abraham Lincoln, and it is kind of scary. It's like, G you but know, how like you pray you sometimes, like, oh Jesus, won't you help me? And then remember when you were a kid, like, yeah, but don't show up because I'll just I'll lose <laughs> I'll it if right, you show up right, here, Jesus. Right. Don't do that. Yeah, and so it, you you th you see the picture and you see almost the soul of the person. In where you can say this guy is an actual person. He's yes. not just an old grainy picture. Right. So man cave pictures. I give them all the credit for what they've been able to do. The other really hot uh, Twitter account lately is Pitching Ninja that we were talking about with yeah. uh, Jeff earlier. Uh, they kicked him off Twitter for using too much of MLB property. Uh, a lot of MLB pitchers came to his aid, and he's back on again. He's he's a guy who shows uh, different pitching techniques and kind of uh, shows off different uh, things that are kind of cool about. Mm -hmm pictures in, in today's world another example of why the nba is way ahead yes. of every league yeah because they want you to make gifts of their yeah. plays and share it on social media right. and all that yeah. other stuff whereas mlb is slapping copyright mlb where a manager wears a uniform and makes a phone call from the dugout to get a relief pitcher ready right on a landline there you go as George Carlin said, uh, it's the only sport where the goal is to go home <laughs> go home and be safe <laughs> Yeah. MLB, we're old timier. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> the drill. Thanks a lot, Beto. Thank we'll you. see you soon. Enjoy the draft. Adios.